Hey guys, Ryan here, and today I'm spotlighting one of the most underrated actors from American Horror Story, the great Dennis O'Hare. But before we get started, let me know which other actors we should spotlight in this series. Hit me up in the comments below. Dennis was of course one of the original cast members from the early years of AHS, starring in five of the first six seasons. Over that stretch, the actor earned multiple Emmy nominations, and we're keeping our fingers crossed that he returns in the future. Let's take a closer look at his American Horror Story run starting at the very beginning. Dennis made his American Horror Story debut in Murder House as the two-faced-looking Larry Harvey, a performance that would earn him a Supporting Actor Emmy nomination. Larry was one of the previous owners of the Murder House, along with his wife Lorraine and their two daughters. By the time the Harmons move into town, Larry spends much of his time stalking the new owners, specifically Ben Harmon. Give me my treat. You don't want the trick. At first, we see him harass Ben for some money and warn him about the house itself. But then we find out more about Larry's past and that he's been in a psychiatric ward. He explains that he was arrested and sent to prison for setting his family on fire while they slept. The only reason he was set free is that he's dying of cancer. But that's not entirely true. See, back in the 1990s, Larry fell in love with Constance Langdon while he was married. He told his then-wife Lorraine that he was leaving her, kicking her out of the house, and that Constance would be moving in. Nice guy. Larry loved Constance so much that he even murdered her son Bo for her. Larry eventually comes clean, admitting that after telling Lorraine about the affair, she locked herself in their daughter's rooms and set it all on fire. He explains that this is how he got all those scars on his face. Again, not entirely true. See, Tate Langdon didn't like Larry, because he killed his brother Bo. And when Tate snapped, he went to Larry's work and set him on fire. Tate would then go on to shoot up Westfield High School. Over the years, Larry never fell out of love with Constance and would do anything to get back into her good graces. Throughout the season, we see him murder numerous people. But no matter what he does, Constance just doesn't share those feelings for him. She was merely using Larry to get back into the murder house. Towards the end of the season, Larry commits to framing Constance for the murder of her boyfriend Travis, but he suddenly has a change of heart after meeting with Lorraine and his daughters in the murder house basement. Constance didn't do anything to our family, Larry. She didn't break any vows. Hmm? That was you. In a desperate attempt to take responsibility for all that he's done, Larry decides to take the fall for Travis's murder. All he wants to hear is Constance say those three words, I love you, but she doesn't feel the same for him. A cold and calculated Constance Langdon visits him at the prison, but tells him that she'll never love him. Dennis sat out season two of Asylum, but would return for Coven as the mute butler Spalding at Miss Robichaux's Academy for Exceptional Young Ladies. He's been there for decades, which means he's seen a lot of shit. He's also extremely loyal and in love with Fiona Good. Decades earlier, he witnessed Fiona murder the supreme Anna Leigh Layton. He also probably helped her clean up the mess. I have always loved you. Then, to show his loyalty, he cut out his own tongue so that he wouldn't be able to tell anyone what he saw that night. Not even a witch's spell could get him to speak. A nearly identical murder took place in the present day when Spalding witnessed the now supreme Fiona murder the up-and-coming Madison Montgomery. Again, he helped dispose of the body. Besides all this dirty work, Spalding mostly keeps to himself and has tea parties with his impressive collection of dolls. At one point, he held on to Madison's rotting corpse and added it to his collection. Luckily, Zoe stumbles upon Madison's body, and along with Queenie and Nan, the trio gets to the bottom of what really happened. They enchant Spalding's old tongue, ew, and put it back into his mouth. He then comes clean with the truth. Zoe has no other choice but to kill Spalding. But that's not the last we see of him. Apparently, his spirit is still free to roam the house and cause problems. What is this, the murder house? He pops back up and convinces Fiona not to get tricked into killing herself in support of the new Rising Supreme. He also helps give an unsuspecting Marie Laveau some Benadryl, but when that plan doesn't work, he just knocks her out with an old doll. He then takes her stolen baby as his own. By the end of the season, Spaulding is reunited with Madison's body after she's strangled to death by Kyle. Who the hell are you? The help. For the fourth season of Freak Show, Dennis delivered one of his most horrifying performances as the con artist Stanley. 
We quickly learn that Stanley will do anything, including murder, for a quick buck. His only real motivation in life is money. Stanley also considers himself a freak because of what's in his pants, but we'll spare you the details. He met his con artist teammate Maggie when she was caught stealing, but he defended her and took her in. He saw himself in her and believed that together they would make quite the team. Eventually, the pair would find themselves on the search for specimens to sell to the American Morbidity Museum. This led them to Elsa Mars' freak show, where Maggie pretended to be a fortune teller and Stanley a Hollywood agent. What followed? Well, numerous innocent people were killed, like Ma Petite, Meep, and Ethel Darling. Stanley would blackmail Del Toledo into killing Ma Petite and would later trick Jimmy Darling into chopping off his hands. Stanley sucks. Luckily, Maggie couldn't follow through with Stanley's horrific plans. She has at least a bit of a soul inside her. She ultimately comes clean about everything, and the surviving freaks take out their revenge on Stanley. That's right, they really make a freak out of him. They cut off all of his limbs, and he's left looking like part human, part chicken, spending the rest of his days in a cage. On to season five, an AHS hotel. This is Dennis O'Hare at his most electrifying. His performance of Liz Taylor is easily his most iconic and popular from the series, earning him yet another Emmy nomination. Liz Taylor was the transgender receptionist and bartender of the Hotel Cortez. Prior to her time at the hotel, Liz lived in Topeka, Kansas with a son and wife. As Nick Pryor, he would travel on business trips with his wife's clothing and try them on while in the comfort of his own hotel room. One work trip back in 1984 took him to the Hotel Cortez, where Nick had an unforgettable run-in with the Countess. You dress like a man, walk like a man, but you smell like a woman. <laughs> the Countess gave Nick a complete makeover, and it was here that Liz Taylor was born. Liz was finally empowered and encouraged to embrace her identity as a woman. She no longer felt ashamed. Unfortunately, Liz ran into her homophobic co-workers in the hotel hallway. After they spewed their hatred for Liz, the Countess popped up behind them and took care of the problem. Howdy, boys. Liz would never leave. She took a job at the Cortez and left her family behind in Kansas. Over the years, she observed a whole bunch of weird stuff going down in the hotel. She came across outcasts, drug addicts, vampires, ghosts, and so on. However, based on her own life experiences, Liz never judged any of them. She was extremely compassionate to everyone she interacted with, unless you made the mistake of crossing her or her friends. Bitches want pate? Pate they shall have. Eventually, the Countess herself becomes a target for Liz because she had killed Liz's lover, Tristan. Despite their relationship, Liz was fed up with how the Countess treated her romantic interests. Liz pleaded with her to let her have Tristan, but the Countess wouldn't allow it, and instead killed Tristan right in front of her. She despised the Countess for what she had done. Ultimately, she would team up with Iris and attempt to take out the Countess. But it isn't so easy to kill a vampire, especially since Liz and Iris have horrible aim. I also have to mention that Liz is a fashion icon. She's always decked out head to toe in an amazing outfit and even teaching models how to vogue. She would eventually help Will Drake revitalize his company by hosting a fashion show for VIPs only. What about the family that Liz left behind? Well, decades later, she would reunite with her son Douglas in an emotional meeting at the hotel bar. He forgave her for the pain that she caused him. Liz was even able to be at the bedside when Douglas welcomed a child into his family. Despite the many blessings bestowed on Liz, she still felt unfulfilled. There was a void left in her heart that only Tristan could fill. On top of this, she was recently diagnosed with cancer. Instead of trying to fight the illness, she decided that she should die in the hotel and live eternally inside its walls. In the spirit of forgiveness, the Countess reunited with Liz and was there to do the honors. It was fitting that the Countess would be the one to help Liz transition to the afterlife. Liz was finally able to continue her relationships as a spirit in the Hotel Cortez, most significantly with her former lover, Tristan. In his final appearance on the show, Dennis played a actor playing a role in another show. He was the fictional actor William Van Henderson portraying Dr. Elias Cunningham in My Roanoke Nightmare, a reenactment of the Roanoke story. Cunningham was a professor from Bradley University who visited the Roanoke house in the late 1990s. He was there to do research for his book, but his stay at the house ultimately resulted in him going mad while documenting all the weird stuff going down at the house. We learned about his story thanks to some found footage in the house's underground bunker. Cunningham hid out in the basement for a few months to stay safe from the many evil spirits lurking around. 
I don't know if I will survive, but I have to see exactly what it is. And when the Piggy Man showed up to attack Matt and Shelby, Cunningham saved the day and used a familiar word to banish the monster. <sighs> Unfortunately, the story doesn't end well for Dr. Cunningham. The Roanoke colonists attack, and he's shot a few times in the chest by their arrows. He's left for dead, but then Matt and Shelby are captured by those cannibals next door, the Polk family, and there they find out that the professor has been turned into their next meal. But the Polks aren't fans of his flesh, so they ultimately decide to take him out of his misery. Luckily for William Van Henderson, he didn't suffer the same fate as Dr. Cunningham. After taking part in My Roanoke Nightmare, the actor smartly declined the opportunity to return for the sequel, Return to Roanoke, becoming one of the very few people that actually survived season 6. So which Dennis O'Hare performance is your favorite? Mine has to be Liz Taylor. Hit me up in the comments and let me know yours. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.